like you saw at the beginning of the video today, we're going to be doing some cloth simulation and applying that with visual effects all inside of Blender. Now, before we go and get started, I just want to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon and YouTube members. Without your guys' continued support, I don't know if I could provide free content for you guys on YouTube, so I really appreciate it. Also, with this video, I'm going to provide you guys all of my links I use, including my Blender file, so make sure to go check out that down below. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, the first thing I need to do is set up my camera inside of Blender. So I'm going to be using a program called FSPY today to actually uh, get the orientation. So let's go ahead and drop my first frame into FSPY. And let's just go ahead and uh, position some of these lines in my scene. This is a great tool to get uh, very accurate, you know, scenes inside of Blender if you are uh, referencing any images and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and set this X to a Z just because we have some nice up and down lines here that I'm going to be using um, to actually rotate my scene. Now we do want to try to be as accurate as possible to this just uh, because we're actually going to be modeling this building. So finally, let's plug uh, the uh, origin in there and I'm going to save this project. You can save it as uh, whatever you want, but I'm just going to save it like that. And then let's go ahead and come back inside of Blender. Now you do need the FSPY importer add-on. So I'll have both of those links down below, but we can go ahead and import that in and let's locate that uh, FSPY project that we just made. So here is mine. We can go ahead and import that in. And of course, I just want to delete everything else that we're not going to be using. Uh, so we have this building in our scene and with our uh, camera in here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to increase the opacity. Let's shift a mesh. I'm going to add a cylinder. And then the idea here is that we just want to uh, kind of get this edge of our building so we can actually model this out as accurately as possible. So let's just scale that down uh, and then move it on the Y over here, uh, just like that. And so now we have that edge of that building defined. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, move a new window out here just so we can go to the side view. And what I want to do is let's go into edit mode and three to go into face select and uh, alt Z to go to wireframe. And then what I want to do is just select this half and let's move it over to this side of the building uh, just so that this side is correctly modeled. Of course, we do have to uh, select the bottom face here and let's move that down just off screen there. And then this top face, what we have to do is since we're working with uh, cloth simulation is that we have to make sure our topology is correct. And so with that, we need everything in quads. And so all a quad is, is basically just a polygon with four vertices. And so this is a perfect uh, quad right here. However, this top face has, I believe, like 32 vertices or something crazy like that. So we need to uh, basically convert this top face into quads. So what I'm going to do, I, I'm not a great modeler, and so there are pro probably better methods to do this, but I'm going to just hit I to inset this a couple of times just so we get it to the center here. Now you do have to watch out because we are having uh, some, you know, geometry overlapping here. So let's undo that. And we just want to make sure we don't have uh, that issue pop up. So once we're like this, I'm just going to delete this uh, kind of center face right here. Of course, uh, we have this one at the bottom. This one isn't going to be rendered, so I'm not going to really worry about, um, you know, doing all of the stuff there. So we can just hit X and delete the bottom face. Uh, now, of course, we need to add more geometry since, again, cloth uh, simulations deal with the geometry data of an object. So I'm going to hit hold control and hit R to add a loop cut. We can just click and then right click and uh, open up this window down here. I'm just going to set the uh, number of cuts to 25 like that. And then we can do the same exact thing over here. So uh, again, control R, uh, you know, right click out of that, go to this menu and set it to 25. So now we have all of the up and down kind of cuts in our object. Uh, now we do need more uh, that are going side to side. So let's go ahead and control R. And now if I come down here, we'll add a loop cup here. And this one will set to like 50, just so we have a ton of faces and stuff uh, for the cloth simulation to actually use. So that is looking good and, uh, you know, very accurate in my scene. And it does follow this build very nicely. So now let's go ahead and deal with the cloth simulation. So what I want to do is I basically want the cloth to kind of gradually, uh, you know, come into existence. And so what I can do is I want to go ahead and create a new object. So we'll go here, empty, and then we want to create a empty sphere. And so with that, we basically want to start it on frame one. We want it to be in this uh, area up here, uh, you know, out of view. And then let's set I and hit a location keyframe. And then around like 110, we'll say, is when we want this uh, empty to actually come down here and affect this object. Now, I am leaving a little bit on the bottom here. And so you'll see uh, why basically whatever is inside this empty is what's actually going to be our cloth simulation. Uh, so once we are happy with that, let's go ahead and hit I and location again. 
Uh, so now we basically have our empty coming onto our object, and so that is going to be very nice. However, uh, we don't have it affecting anything. So what we need to do is first we need to make a new new vertex group. We're basically going to be using a vertex group to drive where our cloth simulation is actually going to be uh, applied. And so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to hit edit mode. Uh, let's hit A to select all of our geometry. Then let's hit uh, this plus icon, and we just need to name this building over here and then we need to go ahead and apply uh, and assign our geometry to that vertex group so let's just hit assign over here so now all of the geometry of our object is assigned to this building and so what we can do now is let's go to a modifier and we want to add a new modifier we can do vertex weight proximity so what this is going to allow us to do is actually use our empty object to actually uh, determine the vertex group that we just made and so let's go ahead and uh, select that building vertex group then our tar target object of course is going to be our empty and so with that you can see that nothing has really happened in order to view what it is doing we can actually go into the weight paint section and so now everything is red uh, and we need to go ahead and affect this empty so instead of object let's set geometry and now you can see that we have uh, some point uh, where our empty is so that it's actually going to be affecting our uh, weight paint and so our ver vertex group so let's go ahead and dial this in all we have to do is first of all let's set it instead of linear i'm going to set it to smooth and then we just need to play around with this lowest and highest number. Uh, and so this is going to be a uh, very, you know, um, dependent on your own scene and so you just want to play around with that number until uh, you get a result that you like. I'm going to be trying to stick around this empty and so now you can see that, um, you know, if we play around with this number some more, this uh, line is actually following where our empty is. And so that's very good and nice visual way to tell where our empty is going to be. And so now you can see if I kind of play this back and forth, you can see that uh, gradually we're getting uh, some more blue into our scene. And so, of course, the blue area is where we're going to want our cloth and the red area is where we're going to want uh, the cloth simulation to not be affected. So with all of that set up now, let's come back out to uh, object mode. Let's go ahead and add a cloth uh, simulation. So just type in cloth in the modifiers tab. And now we have uh, all of these settings. Now I'm not going to be going too uh, into depth about the cloth simulation stuff. This is where you can kind of experiment. But of course, the first thing that we need to do is uh, actually define where the cloth simulation is being applied. And so that's super easy. What we can do is come into the shape tab over here and we just want to use our building uh, kind of vertex group that we created. Uh, remember, we are using that empty to actually drive that. And so as you can see uh, over here, it actually, uh, you know, when our empty comes over here, that is what is applying to the cloth simulation. And so that's just a really cool result and effect type there. Uh, so what I want to do is let's uh, play around a little bit with the physics. So I'm going to come to the field weights. We'll turn gravity a little bit down, not all the way down, just because I want uh, to have a little bit of effect, uh, but not all the way. And so now you can see it gradually kind of comes down like that. Let's go ahead and add some uh, force fields and stuff in our scene. So the first one I'm going to do is shift A. I'm going to add a wind. And so that wind is going upwards. You can see this arrow on the side. Uh, and then the strength will set up to, I believe, like a 10,000 right now. Uh, we can always change around this a little bit later. So now if I play the animation, you can see that uh, now we actually have the cloth and everything affected in our scene and it's blowing the uh, object around. So that looks pretty good. I also believe I added a uh, turbulence for force field. So we'll add that in and we'll set that to like 10,000 for now. Again, this is where uh, really we have to play around with the cloth simulation uh, just because cloth is a very kind of complicated thing inside of uh, Blender. And so just playing around with numbers there, even scene to scene uh, might be a little bit different. Uh, so that is looking pretty good. What I do notice if we play this is that some of the geometry is kind of following in, uh, falling in on itself. So let's go ahead and make sure that the collisions that it is uh, colliding with itself. So let's turn self collision on and then some other properties here. What I might do is let's go ahead and set up some internal pressure. So we'll set this to like one and then I do want to go ahead and set up um, in our shape. We can go ahead and set up our shrinking factor. We'll do like a negative point. Uh, one, which is what I found to work pretty well for this scene. All it does is just kind of expand that little border a little bit and give us a pretty cool result. And so this is pretty much what I'm going to stick with for this tutorial. So again, just play around with it yourself and get a uh, result that you like. But now what we can do is let's go ahead and bake this out. And so uh, baking it out is basically just going to, you know, bake it into keyframes. So it's the same exact uh, thing every time that we play. And so we can come over here. Let's go to the cache section. And then one to 250 is totally fine for this bake. Let's go ahead and hit bake. And now you can see it's actually baking into keyframes. Okay, so once it has finished, what we can do is let's do some kind of final steps uh, to get this ready to actually be rendered. 
So first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and right click shade smooth and now you can see it, it's looking a little bit better. We still do have a little bit of geometry and artifacting there. So what I'm actually going to do is let's add a subdivision surface modifier and we want to make sure that that is after everything. And so now with that applied, we'll set it up to two. Uh, now everything is looking a lot more detailed and a lot more like cloth. And so that is looking good. The other thing is that we don't have any textures or lighting in our scene. So let's go ahead and set up some of that. So I'm going to come over. We'll set it to cycles. I'm going to set GPU compute on. We'll denoise the viewport, but not the render. And for now, I'll set the render sample count down to uh, 1024. Uh, we can always change this at the very end once we are actually ready for the high quality render. So now let's go ahead and project our texture onto it. Uh, onto this object so i'm going to go to the shader editor and let's hit a new material i'm just going to name this building and then let's go ahead i want to import in our texture from our actual uh, video footage that we have okay so here is our footage let's open that up and we'll plug the color into the base color there uh, now of course we don't have the uv, UV defined so we need to go ahead and uv unwrap this what i'm going to do is select this we can hit a to select everything then if i hit u and project from view since we're basically projecting from the camera uh, we basically just projected uh, the texture uh, purely from the camera and so this is giving us this result you see if I turn auto refresh on and then let's go ahead and uh, set this to mirror just to uh, kind of smooth out some of that bottom section there. Uh, of course, everything is very dark and not matching our scene, and that's because we don't have any lighting. Now, you could uh, go in and get an HRI and, you know, mess around a little bit with the lighting there. What I'm going to do is uh, keep it super simple. I'm just going to turn this gray value up to like a white and then we can mess around with the strength. I'll turn it down a little bit, just say like 8.8 uh, just to match that a little bit better. And so that is looking pretty good and what I'm going to stay with for my scene now uh, i will notice that we don't have transparency in our scene because we can see this white sky texture so let's go ahead and turn the render uh we'll turn transparency on and since we're since we're here we'll go ahead and turn on motion blur as well i'm just going to keep it at a 0.5 shutter is totally fine for my needs okay so some final steps here is if i actually play this video you can see that we're having uh some issues on the texture up here and again that's because we actually uh, applied that texture uh from the project from view and so let's go play around a little bit with this so i'm going to increase the roughness and then we'll decrease the specular and uh, that is just kind of removing some of the reflections uh, of the uh, you know scene and stuff like that and so it just makes it a little bit more uh, natural to the scene and so then finally we'll notice that uh, we have some duplicate texture and stuff up here in order to get rid of that i'm just going to come to the top view up here and then let's go ahead and just uh, select all of the top faces so just like that so now we only have the top faces selected let's come make a new material so I have a new material over here and we'll just hit assign. And so now we basically have a new material up on the top here and I want to make that new material. We'll just name that roof and I'll make this kind of dark gray color and I don't want it to be reflective. So I'll return the uh, roughness up. Uh, so now we basically just have a roof, a very simple roof texture. Uh, so now you can see that it has fixed that. Now let's go ahead and get this ready to render out. So I'm going to be compositing in a separate Blender project. Uh, one thing I do want to call attention to is that sometimes, uh, w depending on your cloth simulation, is that we might actually see the building uh, kind of peer behind it. And so in order to not have cleanup I issues in compositing, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a new camera that basically zooms in a little bit. Uh, so in order to not, you know, um, get rid of our previous camera, let's. Uh, I'm going to Shift D, duplicate that camera, and then I'm just going to quickly add a new uh, collection just so we can organize everything so this is our new camera i'll just name this main cam like that and then uh, now if i press this green camera button now we're only affecting the main camera and not our original camera again just i want to be as non-destructive as possible in case we ever do have to go back to that other camera so let's go uh, i'm going to come up to view and then we can go to navigation and there's this walk navigation down here now if we use wasd we can just kind of walk our camera in a little bit uh, just so it's a little bit bigger and we actually don't see uh, the previous building behind it uh, it's just going to save us a little bit in compositing uh, so now once we have all of that set up let's go ahead and render out an image just to make sure uh, everything is accurate uh, so this is uh, all we're going to leave it for in this project let's render a image okay so here is the image this is exactly what we want and it's going to give us a pretty cool result uh, so that is all let's go ahead and set it up to render this out so output properties you can of course save it in whatever location that you want to i do highly recommend that you save it as a png sequence uh, just in case blender crashes that you're not going to have to lose all your progress uh, so we do need alpha channel 
so RGBA. Now compression uh, PNG is actually a lossless format, and so that means that we can change this compression around to whatever we want, and the data isn't uh, going to be affected. And so uh, if you have a ton of time to render, then I highly recommend that you change this all the way up to 100. Um, of course, 15 is totally fine for my needs uh, since I have enough storage space, but that is always a consideration that you can have. Uh, so once all of that is set up, and of course you have it in its own folder location, we can come up here and render the animation. Once it has finished rendering, we can come out to the file and new general. Then let's open up a new compositing tab, and we don't need this render layers nodes because we're not rendering anything in this Blender project. Uh, let's go ahead and import in our uh, footage and our CG pass. So first is the footage. Okay, so here's mine. It's just a PNG sequence again. Then let's shift D to create that down, and now we need our CG passes. Okay. So here is my render. Let's go ahead and open up that image. And then now, of course, uh, we are in the wrong color space. And uh, that is because in anything 2D, we want to be working with the standard view transform. And so by default, Blender comes uh, with AGX, which is the best for CGI. Uh, so let's change it from AGX to standard. And now the colors are way more accurate. Let's go ahead and combine the two. So I'm going to do a uh, alpha over. So let's add that in right here. And then we'll place the uh, CGI on top and the footage on the bottom. Uh, now we can see that we have this result. We are having some issues with the alpha channel. And so whenever you have a CGI or anything with transparency, we want to go ahead and add in a alpha convert node. So let's add that in. And now it's automatically set to pre-multiplied. So that just fixes kind of this uh, ugly border around there. Uh, so now that we're having this result, let's go ahead and color correct this just to match it to the original scene. So I'm going to add a color balance in here and we can just uh, up the gamma a little bit and we'll up the lift just a tiny bit as well, just to match it into the previous scene. Now this is where you can play around with your own scene and get a result that you want. Um, what I'm going to do is just to have a little bit of fun with it. We can come and add a lens distortion node. This is one of my new favorite nodes inside of Blender. So I highly recommend that you guys give it a test. Uh, we can up the dispersion. Uh, that's way too much by default. So we'll do like a, Oh, uh, 0.05 maybe so that is looking good just gives us a nice kind of fall off there um, and then i want to add some distortion so we'll go ahead and add like a point uh negative 0.1 uh, lens distortion just so it's kind of uh, distorting that that's actually way too much for my scene so let's do let's divide that by 10 so let's just do a 0.01 uh, negative distortion so that is looking good and just kind of gives us more lens distortion in there uh, i do want to go ahead let's uh saturate everything so i'm going to add a hue saturation value node i'll have that before the uh, distortion just because i want to affect some of the color before all of that and so let's go ahead i want to bump up the saturation bit just so the blues of the sky pop a little bit more and then finally i might add a little bit more contrast into this just to have some fun with it so of course, let's add a brightness contrast node, plug that in there, and I'll bump up the contrast ever so slightly. Uh, we don't want to go too crazy into it because uh, it'll look ugly. Now you can see our blacks are popping a little bit more. Uh, now, if I was doing this for uh, legit, this would probably be where I take it into another, you know, coloring program and all this stuff. But these are just some easy things that you can do if you just want to stick inside of Blender. And so the final thing that we have to do is let's go ahead and plug this into the composite node. We can come out here. We want to go to the output properties. This is where you can save the final uh, kind of output location. So once you have that saved uh, wherever you want it to be saved, uh, since it's going to render so fast now, let's uh, save it as a video file. So FFmpeg video, I'm going to save it as a MP4 file file and then uh, set it to high quality and then once you have all of that set up let's finally come up here and render the final animation okay so here is the final result that we got from this tutorial hopefully you guys got something similar or learned a thing or two on the way i think this is a really cool effect and uh, something that you can totally apply to other aspects of uh, you know advertising or anything like that uh, so if you did uh, get this far in the video i'd greatly appreciate it if you consider liking and subscribing again i do have a patreon down in the description below if you do want to support the channel more i really appreciate it anyways thank you so much for watching and i will catch you in the next video